Recently we will be solving this problem called increasing subsequence. So we are given an array containing n integers and our task is to determine the longest increasing subsequence in the array, i.e. the longest subsequence where every element is larger than the previous one. And we recall that a subsequence is a sequence that can be derived from the array by deleting some elements without changing the order of the remaining elements. So our input will consist of n, the length of the array, it can be up to 200,000, and then uh, the values will follow up, each value can be up to a billion, and we just have to output the length of the longest increasing subsequence. So let's head to the drawing board and see how we can solve this problem. So to get a better feel for the problem, let's try to work out this example. Recall we need to find the longest increase in subsequence. So what is a subsequence? It is what we are left with if we choose to remove certain elements. For example, if we remove all elements except 3 and 4, we will be left with the subsequence 3, 4. So this is a subsequence of the array. However, for 3, is not a subsequence because the order needs to remain the same. So what we need to find is the longest increase in subsequence. So an increase in subsequence is a subsequence where each element is larger than the previous one. For example, 75 is also a subsequence of this array, however it's not increasing. So our goal is to find the longest such subsequence. So to do that, let's start by generating all possible increase in subsequences. And we will do that by processing each element and then see how we can improve the solution we had before by including this element. So in the first step, we only have seven, so we can actually construct a, an increase in subsequence that only contains seven. In the second step, we will also include the three. Can we create a longer subsequence with this three? We can't because seven is larger than three. So we will just have that subsequence with seven and the new subsequence that only contains three. Now we will check five. So for five, can we add it to this? No, but we can add it to this. So we will have a longer subsequence that will contain 3 and 5. So we will have 3, 5. We also have the subsequences we had before, so 7 and 3. And we also have this subsequence that only contains 5 by itself. Let's just skip it. Maybe it will combine with some other values that will come later. Next, let's move on to 4. So let's see if we can, can combine 4 with what we had previously. We cannot add it to this subsequence nor to this one, but we can actually add it to this one. So we would get 3, 4, and we would have the subsequences that we had before, so 3, 5, 7, 3, 5, and 4 by itself. Finally, we will deal with 5. So for 5, can it be added to any of these subsequences? Yes, it can be added to this one, to this one, and to this one. So here we have 3, 4, 5. With this we will have 3, 5. And with this we will have 4, 5. And then we will also have the previous subsequences that we generated. So 3, 5, 7, 3, 5, and another 5. So that's it. We found our longest subsequence, which is this one. So for this we will output an answer of 3. So to see how we got this answer, let's actually write down what is the best answer at each step. So here in the first step, the longest we could manage is 1 and it is represented by the subsequence 7. Here we have two subsequences, 3 and 7. Let me actually sort them in increasing order. So we have the subsequence 3 and the subsequence 7. What about here? Here, the best I obtained is this subsequence of length 2, and it is 3, 5. Here, 
The best I can do is a subsequence of length 2 and I have 3, 4 and 3, 5. I sorted them in this order because 4 is less than 5. And finally here the best I can do is a subsequence of length 3 containing 3, 4 and 5. Do you notice something? So each step when the length of the subsequence actually increased, it could have came from any of these two possibilities. For example, for this, it could have came from this subsequence of length 2 or this one. The same thing for 3, 5. When we first had a subsequence of length 2, it could have came from this one or this one. But as you notice, it always comes from the smaller subsequence. And this makes sense because if it was possible to add to the largest subsequence here, it will also be possible to add to the smaller one. In this example, for example, if the element we added is 8 and I was able to generate a subsequence 7, 8 with the same 8, I could have also generated a subsequence 3, 8. You also notice that I got my answer by only storing the best solution in the previous step. So I did not actually need to store all possible increasing subsequences. I could simply keep the longest one at each step and it will be guaranteed that any subsequence I create will also emerge from this one as long as I keep the best subsequence. But how can I actually do that? How can I man maintain what is the best subsequence I have at each step? So the best subsequence has to be the longest and also it has to be the smallest in order. For example, at this step, 3, 5 is not what I should have stored. I should have stored 3, 4 because 3, 4 is smaller than 3, 5. So what I mean is that in a single array, I will keep track of the best increasing subsequences of all lengths in a single array. So I start with the empty subsequence, then I start processing these elements. So 7 is the best increasing subsequence of length 1. So I have 7. Next, I process 3. Now I have to ask myself, if I include 3, is 7 still the best longest increase in subsequence of length 1? The answer is no, because 3 has the same length as 7, but it is smaller in uh, order. So now my solution becomes 3. Next, I process 5. So I ask myself, can 5 make the answer better? And in fact, it can. So instead of having a length of 1, now I have a length of 2 with 3, 5. And it is still true that the best increase in subsequence of length 1 is 3, and the best increase in subsequence of length 2 is 3, 5. Now I process 4. Can 4 make my solution longer? Well, it can't because I cannot add 4 here. And let me check if this is still the best solution. So the best solution of length 1 is still 3, but the best increase in subsequence of length 2 is not 3, 5. It is 3, 4. So I need to actually update my answer to 3, 4. This way, 3 is still the best subsequence of length 1, and 3, 4 is the best subsequence of length 2. And finally, I process this 5 and it can make my answer better, so I get 3, 4, 5. And for each length, this is the best subsequence with that length. To make this clear, let me add more values here, so I, I will add 1. 2, 3, and 4. So let's process 1. Can 1 make this subsequence longer? Well, it can't. 
And now let's check, is 3 the best subsequence of length 1? Well, it isn't, because 1 is smaller than 3. So we have to update this to 1, 4, 5. It is true that uh, 1, 4 is not a valid subsequence here, because 1 came after 4, but we are not interested about that, because if you have a subsequence, that adds in 4, what you care about is this 4, because it is this 4 that will tell you whether or not you can add some value after it. Whether you have a 1 or a 3 here does not make any difference in whether or not you can add a value to your uh, subsequence. So basically we have to look for the smallest value that is larger than or equal our actual value that we are processing. So for 2, can you guess what the new updated answer will be? You are right, it will be 1, 2, 5. How, do, how did we get that? We got that because 4 is the smallest value that is larger than or equal to 2. So here we have to ask ourselves what is the best subsequence of length 2? And the answer is 1, 2. This subsequence is better than 1, 4. So for 3, we will do the same thing. We will ask what is the smallest value that is larger than or equal to 3, and the answer is 5. So this becomes 1, 2, 3. And finally, 4 will actually make our answer better, so we just append 4. So what did we do here? We started with an empty array that we can represent as a vector and each time we do one of two things. The more obvious thing is we check the, the back of the vector and if it is smaller than the value we are processing we will just add it. The second thing we do is that if that's not the case like here what we need to do is to find the smallest value that is larger than or equal than the actual value we are processing. So in this case, the smallest value was 5, that's why we changed this 5 to a 4. In the case of the one here, we were processing 1, so we need to find what is the smallest value that is larger than or equal to 1. And is it 5? No, we can do better. 4, 3. So the answer was 3. That's why uh, we updated the answer to be 1, 4, 5. So in this clever way, we can keep track of the best increase in subsequence of any length. The only thing left we have to figure out is how to do that update we just talked about. Namely, how we can find the position of the smallest number larger than or equal our value x. And this is pretty easy because if you notice, our vector here is always sorted in increasing order. So we can use the lower bound method that returns an iterator on exactly this, namely an iterator on the smallest number larger than or equal a given value. And by doing pointer arithmetic, we can deduce exactly what index we have to update. So that's pretty much it. Let's see how that looks in code. So this is our program. I'll start by reading n. Then I will declare my vector subsequence. This is the vector we talked about here that represents the best subsequence we have so far. So in the beginning it is empty. Then I will process all the values. I will read the value. Then as I said I need to find what is the smallest value that is larger than or equal x. So to do that, I will use the lower bound function we talked about. So it takes an iterator to the beginning and the end of the vector, as well as the value. And it will return an iterator. And the difference between it and the beginning of the subsequence will give me the actual index. 
So now we have to process the two cases. So the first case is when the position, so the smallest value that is larger than or equal to five in this case will be larger than uh, the whole vector. So it return it will give me a value that is larger than the size of the vector. So I check for that by this. So if my index equals the size of the subsequence, I just push it back. Otherwise, I update that index by the value I just read. And at the end, the length of the vector will be actually equal to my answer. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and submit our code. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.